Hi everyone. Um, so uh, yet another reporting from Tigray. Um, uh, this time from uh, physicians for, for human rights. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't ever remember having reading any report from them before. Uh, I think this could be my first time that I'm reading reports uh, by physicians for for, for human rights. Uh, and anyway, they, they report about about uh, what they call conflict-related sexual violence in Tigray. Um, and um, well, principally, I'm here to just bring this to your attention because I, I found uh, the reporting very, very meticulous and and um, detailed. Um, and I think um, you should try to to read um, it because I could see that a lot of work and uh, and um, effort um, must have gone into into it. So as I have been trying to to do by way of bringing to your attention reports that I thought were. Um, were good um, i'm going to, I'm, I'm trying to do that here as well uh, but um, i'm not tr going to try to give you a summary in the way that i i have been doing before uh, because it's, it's um the reporting is um so detailed that any attempt at summary at the summary would wouldn't do it any justice so i'm, I'm not going to try to um, attempt that uh, but I would just highlight some facets of the report that really surprised me. Um, and one, one is the 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 the, the prevalence of, of sexual violence of rape. Let's let's be blunt. Uh, and they say, for instance, that the entire report here is based on three hundred and five randomly selected medical records. So they. They collected 305 uh, randomly selected medical records. They don't explain why uh, 305. Why not more? Why not less? Uh, but that's not that's not um, um, that's not um, uh, that's not a problem now. And out of so just try to uh, follow through uh, this very carefully. So they they collected 305 randomly selected medical records so as far as they were concerned it could be the, the medical record could be about anything it could be about rape it could be about uh, um, leg injury it could be about um, abdominal pain it could be anything just randomly selected medical records uh, 305 of them and it turns out that out of the 305 medical records that they sampled 304 so that is just one short of the total number of um, uh, records that they took were about sexual violence. So out of 305 randomly selected medical records, 304 of them were about sexual violence. This is, I, I, I really want you to, to, to linger on the, this fact. It's really staggering if you think about it. So you take... 350 random medical records and out of that 304 um, you, you could as well say 305 all of it is is um, is to do with um, uh, conflict related sexual violence which again as I said uh, I'm I'm more than happy to say um, is rape I'm not trying to uh, sort of catastrophize or do anything I think that that is what it is and in fact if you go through the the report, because they give a lot of you know accounts of um, stuff that that happened, uh, sometimes group rape, sometimes um, uh, just one person raping, uh, but for the most part, the stories that they they give here are of of uh, well, not stories actually. I'm I'm a bit wrong because they they they, they provide statistics um, only from from the medical um, records. So for instance, they make a distinction between uh, group rape. Um, where was it? Um, and uh, where was it? Uh, so analysis of this data revealed that rape committed by multiple perpetrators for, accounted for the majority majority of documented um, actors. So that is seventy six percent of the of the randomly collected data is actually about 
group rate. And they, 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 they give breakdown by, by age, by um, whether it was by Eritreans or by Ethiopians um, and by, by a number of other variables. So a really, really um, well researched report. So that is the one aspect that really uh, shocked me um, that out of uh, 305, well, uh, we, you could say out, you know, they took X number of random medical records and it turned out that all of them are um, rape related. I, I think that, that we could say that that is what happened. And if you really think about that, that fact alone, it's shocking and, and really, really staggering. And it just tells you how normalized um, rape was. Um, so much so that hospitals were um, exclusively handling rape-related cases. That, that is simply what, what happened. So that is the one aspect that I wanted to, to highlight. The other aspect that um, I want to, to highlight is even after the signing of the agreement in Pretoria between the TPLF and the Ethiopian regime, sexual violence and rape hasn't stopped. And in fact, they say that since the, the signing of the agreement, uh, there have been 128 reports of sexual violence, and most of them, for some reason, that the report doesn't explain, against children. So against people aged um, under 18. So even the, the signing of the agreement hasn't had uh, any bearing on, on the prevalence of, of, of rape. And you could just... Uh, so this is data from, from parts of Tigray that has been liberated, that is under the control of the uh, Tigray government. And there is no telling what might be happening in Western Tigray um, and Western, the, the part of Western Tigray that is under the occupation of the Fano militia, because the Fano arm um, implicated in the in the in the in the report as as are the um, are the um, uh, perpetrators of of rape, and there is no telling what what the Eritreans uh, in Europe and in in huge parts of Eastern Tigray and um, Western Tigray as well uh, might be doing and. It, in, in the report, Eritreans are um, actually the, the ones who are the most responsible for, for, for rape. So those two aspects, I think, um, think that I don't think many people uh, realize because of the, uh, you know, barrage of propaganda that we have been subjected to. Uh, a lot of people have been brainwashed into believing now that the whole thing has stopped now in Tigray and that uh, normality has resumed. But of course, that is not what has happened. Um, rape is continuing. Um, Eritreans are doing what they have always done. Rape, loot, uh, plunder. And that, uh, again, this report is exclusively about rape. So I'm adding stuff that the report doesn't deal with. But you get my point. Um, and... Um, and and, uh, and they they so again they they you know they 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 give breakdown of the data by by a number of variables. I think this is the most meticulous and and rigorous reporting that I have read about rape on, on Tigray. So I really would like uh, not that I, they are expecting any compliment from me, but I would really like to to compliment the people who uh, who. Uh, produced uh, this report, and if if you want to know who the people are, I think they are they are here. So, um, Lindsay Green, um, she's the senior program officer. Uh, Payal Sham, I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, and Thomas uh, McHale, uh, Ranit Mishori. Um, so, really wonderful job that they have done, and they they. They have offered recommendations to the ATPN government, to the Tigrayan government, to the international community. It's the usual stuff that people have been saying that they should allow for independent investigation, that there should be some sort of they should the ATPN government should offer some sort of um, psychosocial service to people who have been 
uh, affected by this. I, I shouldn't say people who have been affected by this to women who have been raped. I think the I I am one of the people who always say that we shouldn't abuse um, language. When you say people who have been affected by this, you, you know, you 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 make rape sound acceptable, and we should use a language that is as descriptive as 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 is possible. And uh, I think that the language that would be as descriptive as possible in this case would be women who have who have been raped and now who are um, having to um, endure uh the, the 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 aftermath uh of that and that experience can only be horrible um and they say and this is the, one of the points that i want to um, emphasize uh that the uh, the un investigative body um ich um, r i e e um, should be given access to the places uh in Tigray and its mandate should be extended because they say that the amount of rape, the amount of sex sexual related, um, uh, conflict related sexual violence or rape uh, that has been perpetrated in Tigray is so great that the team, the UN investigative team uh, would need more time. But of course, as you will have heard, there are, there are, there are, there are, um, there are moves by the Ethiopian um, government and by the Ethiopian regime and its allies uh, for, for ending the, the mandate uh, in September, I, I, I believe. And I think this mandate now um, ends in, um, in December, so by the um, end of this by the end of this year, but they have been uh, saying that they need more time to, to investigate. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's incumbent upon us. Uh, people who care about Tigray, people who care about uh, justice, to to push for for their mandate to be to be extended. Um, but before I uh, wrap this up, I would like to strongly suggest that you read uh, this report and you share it around. Um, I think it's a very important uh, report, and I would like to say thank you to the people who. Who have um, who have put in um, a lot of time and um, and effort into this, and uh, that with that, thank you. Bye bye.